forward. Do I know you? Have I met you? No. Okay, because you look super familiar to me. Swing this way just a little. We just like to make sure we give everybody lots of room to Tetris in a space that they're going to have plenty of space. Tell me your first name. Gerald. Gerald, okay. I don't, it's no particular reason why I ask people their first names. I just like to feel personal. Sometimes I like to refer to them by name, and I just like to meet new people. It's very nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Okay, go ahead and close your eyes for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for just the craftsmanship that you've put in Gerald's life. I thank you, Father, for um, giving him innovativeness to be able to figure things out. I really feel like you have a very creative anointing that the Lord has given you the ability. I even want to say like to build things, that you're able to build things, create things, craft things. And I really feel like everything that you have touched, the Lord says, though you feel like it was just a handiwork thing, that everything you touched, God was smearing with his presence. The anointing actually talks about the rubbing or the smearing of the kingdom on something. And you carry that in your hands. And I, I feel like you know that. I feel like there's, there have been things that you have made in your life that other people would just say it's just an object or it's just a thing. But you've been like, nah, it's just it's so much more than that, that I've actually smeared this. I have covered it with the presence. I have covered it with the anointing. I've covered it with the kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for just the obedience of his hands. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving him a love for you. And I just see a real tenderness in your heart towards the Father. And I almost feel like the older you've gotten, the sweeter it's gotten, the more intimate it's gotten. I feel like the Lord is saying there was a time where you really struggled, kind of had like this um, contention between you and the Lord. And the older you've gotten, the more freedom you have found in surrender to him. And the more you've understood what it means for God to actually be your husband. And I say that like the lover of my soul, right? Where the Bible talks about how he is our lover. And so, God, I thank you, Lord, for the intimacy you've brought into his life. I thank you, Father, for shifting things from master to lover. And that's what it talks about with the woman um, in Hosea, where it says he allures her out into the wilder wilderness in order that she, he might speak tenderly to her. And I believe there's been seasons in your life where God has allured you out into the wilderness so that he could speak tenderly to you and he could reveal to you the tenderness of the kingdom. And in that space, it says he wiped the bales from her lips so that she would no longer call him master, but she would call her her husband. And again, it's the idea, it denotes the idea that the wildernesses in our lives have shifted our relationship with the Lord from seeing him as a dictator, from seeing him as a master, to recognizing this is my lover. This is the love of my life, that there's an intimacy here. And so, Father, I thank you for Gerald. I thank you for alluring him into the intimacy of the kingdom. I pray, Holy Spirit, that tonight that you would fill him with more, that you would remind him, God, that every day is a new day and that you're still just beginning. Just keep receiving that. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, for a fresh baptism of fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She wants to participate. You want she to just had back surgery. Okay, you want to sit? Uh, she's doing really well. Man, I'm doing really well. I'm already back at work and I have my surgery March 8th. So. Okay. But she's I got you. Don't want to get land on my back. Do you want to sit? Just take a seat. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Take a seat right there. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, we'll make room. There's room for you. Tell me your name. Anna. Anna? Can I have your hand? <laughs> Just look, you you can't go anywhere. Oh. Okay, here we go. Expediting of your physical healing, but more importantly, an expediting of your identity healing. Things in your childhood being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, let him do it. We just choose to forgive. We let go. Come on, we don't have time for anger and bitterness. I'm going to just wiggle your arm, right? So I'm just going to loose you into that freedom. Loose you into that freedom. There it is. There it is. Things in your childhood heal right now in Jesus' name. Every abuse. Yeah, come on. I'm going to let it heal. I'm going to touch your chest, okay? I break the effect of every abuse off of you right now in the name of Jesus. You are not broken. You are not abuse worthy. You are not a victim. God says the things that offended you angered him, yet God still forgives and therefore he releases his forgiveness to you and through you, to you and through you. Thank you, Father. 
I want you to just kind of get a visual in your mind of that person that abused you. And I want you to see God just walking off with them. Come on, because forgiveness isn't saying what you did to me is okay. Come on, just release that. Forgiveness is saying, I let God deal with you. I'm going to let God deal with you. I'm going to let God deal with you. Come on, I'm not going to hold you anymore. You can't have my back. Come on, you can't be a burden that I carry. Get your freedom. Get your freedom. There's no way I could know all of this stuff. Only the Holy Spirit would know this. He knows you. He knows everything about you. There's never been a day that he hasn't been with you. God says he's been with you every moment of your day. He has seen you. And he had this moment in mind all along. And so, Father, I thank you that right now you're healing her heart, you're healing her back, you're healing her past. There it is. Keep releasing that. All the way out. 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 There it is. All the way out. All the way out. I'm right here with you, okay? off of your children's life. I break you off of your lineage. I declare that today, every demonic spirit of abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, religious abuse, goes in the name of Jesus. You can no longer have this lineage in the name of Jesus. They have been dropped into the DNA of Jesus. Come on, the kingdom of freedom and safety. Jesus is your safe place. Come on, you need that safe place. Yeah. More than anybody in this room, you need that. So God says, right now, I am your safe place. Right now, I am your safe place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, when you look in the mirror from today forward, you're not going to see a victim anymore. You're going to see a conqueror. You're going to see a, 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 a victor. Not even just a survivor. You're going to see a victor. I am a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror in Christ. Because God has been for me, no man can stand against me. Come on, I speak the worthiness of the kingdom over you. I hear the Father say, tell her uh, she is worthy to be loved. Yes, yes. You are worthy to be loved. Yes. Listen to me, you're worthy to be loved by God. You're worthy to be loved by people. You're worthy to be loved by others. Yes. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Jesus. So I just take authority over worthlessness that would tell you you're never going to be loved. And God says, I designed you to be loved. I designed you to be loved. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that worthlessness is being broken off of her right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over that right now in Jesus' name. And I want you to say this, I am worthy. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you are. And I want you to say, I am loved. I am loved. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to say this, I am healed. I am healed. Amen. Yes, and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I just want you to let the Father say I bet if you were standing up, you'd be falling out right now. I bet you. She probably would have fallen forward, though. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Just let him wrap his presence around you. Just let him fill you with his peace. That shaking and trembling is just the word of the Lord coming on you. So, again, the Bible talks a lot about trembling and shaking in the presence of God. So, you can see she's got a lot of shaking going on. That's just the power of God. Of course he can tremble us. If he can tremble mountains, he can tremble our bodies. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're going to put blanket on you, okay? <laughs> so, Father, I just thank you. We just rejoice, Father. We won't be here anymore. Your relationship with the Lord is no longer about him loving me. It's about him loving me. Just let him love me. I want you to make a stop trying. And just let him love you. Let him love you. You already did it on the cross. Your relationship is not about works with him. It's just about letting him do it. Just sitting in his presence. We just take authority over all addictions. Addictions were your wounds. So, just as the wounds are being healed, that addiction.
addiction has to leave. No longer has permission to stay in your life. <laughs> so spirits of addiction, you have Thank to you go Jesus. today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You I tell you to get up and out of her body. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. <laughs> up and out of her body. In the name of Jesus. Let that out. There it is. <laughs> there it is. All the way out. We're going to do on the count of three. We're going to yell, okay? I'm going to yell with you. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> there you go. There you go. One more time. All the way out. It's going to come all the way out. Come on. you got to deliver this baby. I can't do it for you. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Okay. Would you say you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to receive a fresh infilling of his presence, okay? Okay. I, I'm going to get it with you. Okay. Because we all need some in this room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to speak the, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, okay. patience, kindness. That's a good breath. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kindness. Goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That a girl. Just keep receiving it all. Full of portions. Come on, because there's more of you to be had now. We thank you, Father, that every occupied space is now being occupied by your Holy Ghost. Yes. We thank you, Father, for the baptism of fire falling upon her. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Nice deep breath in. Ah, it feels good. Mm. Ah. Your, how you doing? Mm. I'm soaked in sweat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's good. That's a good wow. thing, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, just got, you just got the liver. Hallelujah. I'm really soaked in sweat. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Wow. Precious. Beautiful. Oh. Your back feeling good? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, my neck's not hurting. Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's crazy because I didn't tell you nothing about me. That's why I'm, honestly, I tell people I feel bad when I come into a house meeting hanging out beforehand because I'm super intentional not to interact with people. 
So I'm like, I kind of always. I didn't even meet you. I, I kind of feel like a little bit of a snot because I'll kind of sit off to the side and be super intentional to not interact with people because I know what's fixing to go down, and I have people be like, oh, that's because she. I talk. You know what I mean? So yeah, God knows who you are. I don't. I still don't know your name, Anna. Yes, uh, Anna. But God knows. Who you are. Luke two thirty three. My name, yes. the prophetess's daughter, mm -hmm. who was in the temple, mm -hmm. night and day, and caught a glimpse of Jesus when everybody else missed him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's your theme. Wow. <laughs> yeah? It's very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. All right, Father, I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for my brother in Christ. I thank you, Holy Spirit, just for giving him the curiosity of a child. Uh, and the Bible, uh, the, the Bible talks a lot about curiosity and the ability to peer and the desire to peer. And God talks about how there's a natural, um, how there's a natural inclination that we all have to be curious about the Spirit. And religion would crush that in our life. Religion would tell us that it's not good to be curious, that it's dangerous to be curious, it's dangerous to ask questions. Mm -hmm. But God has given you permission to be more and more curious. And you're discovering, again, like a kid in a candy store, you're kind of discovering the more curious I am, the more I'm discovering about Christ. And you've come into a place where you're really um, intimate specifically with the Holy Spirit. Like there have been things that you've kind of peered into that you're like, ah, I'm not really sure about this. But you've trusted the Holy Spirit to navigate you into all truth. There was a time in your life that you thought the word of God is what led you into truth. And then you discovered it was the spirit of the Lord that leads you into truth. And that, yes, God speaks to you through the word. And yes, God used the word. But it's by the revelation of the Holy Spirit that you get the, the revelation of truth. And so I thank you, Father, that you're breaking religion off of him. You're breaking the you can'ts off of him. You're stretching his box. You're stretching out. And the limitations that have been placed on you are being broken off of you in the name of Jesus. I almost see shackles across your um, your bicep area this way. And even as I said that, I felt those. I, I, I did feel those shackles kind of drop off of you. Um, like there's been some belief systems, core beliefs that you were raised up in your system that shackled your arms and kept you from praising to your fullest, kept you from raising your arms to the fullest. And I'm reminded of, I believe it's, oh, who is it? Joshua in the book of Joshua, that he holds up the spear, right? He holds up the word of God for the entire battle. And, and again, we don't know, but I have to imagine that at some point his arm got tired, but the Bible says he held that spear out until the enemy was completely destroyed. And God is giving you that kind of an anointing, the ability to persevere in the battle. We've gotten stubborn in the kingdom and you're like, I'm not dropping this spear. I'm going to hold it out. Not until I think we've won, but until I know the enemy has been completely destroyed. It's like you're a bulldog in the spirit. When God tells you to do something, you grab a hold of that, that rope and the enemy will try and yank it, right? Like in a bulldog, the more you yank that rope, the more tenacious he becomes and the more ticked he gets, the more stubborn he gets, the more he pulls back on that thing. And you've been kind of in that tug of war with the devil where there's been a yanking and, and you've been angered by that. Like when Jesus flipped over the temples and he was like, this is not okay. And I know when I get to be angry and I know the things that I get to war for. And God says that he's giving you that tenacity. When other people quit, you stayed the fight. You stayed the fight. And the father sees that and, and it has cost you some relationships in your life. I really feel like there are people who have been close to you, who have been, thought you were ridiculous, who have turned away from you, who have just let you go. They've kind of fallen off in your life. And God says that you have been willing to let go of those relationships in order to hold more tightly to his hand. And I hear the Father say he is pleased with that. And I hear the Father say he recognizes all the things that you have let go of, but now you have an empty hand for God to refill even more. And so, God, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this tenacity that you've given to him. I thank you for these chains that have been broken off of his arms. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that he would begin to not just know, but that you would feel the truth of the word that says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Mm -hmm. See, that's been a truth you've been holding on to, but tonight God is flooding your heart. He's flooding your life. 
He's bringing it into an emotion where you feel, come on, there's going to be some ridiculous skipping in your life that I see that God's going to bring you into, like where you're just willing to be a little more silly for the things of the Spirit yeah. because God yeah. has set you free where you don't have to look the part, but you're having freedom. You're, you're free to be silly in the Spirit, to skip and rejoice because God has set you free. I'm going to shake your arms out just for me. There we go. And so, Father, we just thank you tonight for the freedom. Yes. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, that every shackle has been broken in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that tonight it's more than just a knowing and his knower, but, God, you're impressing it into his heart. You're impressing it into the fullness of his being. And, God, I thank you that it's becoming a reality. Come on, because there's a difference between having a knowledge of God and that knowledge becoming a reality. Right, you've been fighting, you've been warring, you've been knowing that God has freedom in mind for you, but yet there have been some places where you've been shackled. And tonight, God is bringing that freedom into a reality. It's becoming your reality. This is real. This is for you. And I'm telling you, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel, I feel like even tonight when you go to bed, you're going to sense a difference in the way that you dream. You're going to sense a difference in the way that you sleep. When you wake up tomorrow, you're going to say, I am not the same man that I was when I woke up yesterday. Because God is increasing his glory in my life from glory unto glory. That I'm coming into the ever increasing likeness of Jesus Christ. And the freedom of the kingdom has now become my reality. It's more than a knowledge. And so, Father, I thank you for my brother in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I'm just going to anoint your hands. Obviously, your friend told me that you do ministry, right? He does ministry with you. Is that what he said? So we're just going to anoint your hands with, um, with deliverance, with healing, and with prophecy, right? So we can't really separate all of those because they all kind of work hand in hand. And so, Father, I believe the anointing has already been, already been activated. But God, I also just agree for the activation of that anointing even more, Lord, from the top of his head all the way down to the tips of his toes. Greater confidence, greater authority, a greater knowing in your knower, a greater knowing in your knower. I gave your friend that bullseye anointing. I get to choose to give it to you as well. So I'm going to give it to you as well. And so, Father, I thank you that today you're loosing that anointing. We just release it. Come on. The anointing comes from the inside. It doesn't come from the outside. That's the anointing you're feeling being loose. His glory is already in you. His anointing is already in you. Tonight you're just letting it come up out of you. Come on. Sometimes we think the anointing is something that falls on you. But the glory of the Lord is inside of you. That's just the spirit being loosed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nice job, Clark. Nice job. Yes. He got the head. He got the head. Sometimes guys forget about the head and it's like. No. <laughs> but God, I thank you, Lord, that just like a hub, um, the spokes on a, on a wheel, that there have been people that you have met in places and times and spaces that I really feel like the Lord's going to begin to cross paths. It's almost going to be like there's a wrinkle in time that somebody you met at this place and this time and this space, he's going to begin to cross those paths. And, and you're going to begin to, you're going to say in your head, oh my gosh, I, I, didn't, I don't understand why I didn't think to make this connection before. And the father's going to say like, well, because it wasn't time yet. And so I really feel like there's going to be spaces and also times that God's going to cross in, for a now season. And it's going to be like, oh my gosh, this is right in front of my face that I'm supposed to connect this person from way over here with this person from way over my path, way in my past who lives over in this place. And I really feel like the Lord is going to use you to make some divine connections for this season. And it's super intentional. Somebody else got a word like this. Colette, did you get a word like this? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Um, and I really think it was a, it's just a divine season for you. But it's also a divine season in the kingdom where there have been like God has already made all these connections. It's like you have these files of people in your heart of experiences and encounters that you've had from all around. Not just in this area, but from all around. And I hear the Lord say, pay attention to me because I'm going to begin to use you. Connect, and you're going to be like, I don't know why I'm supposed to connect you, but I'm supposed to connect you. And I really feel like it has really very little to do with you or even the people you're connecting, but rather has everything to do with what God is doing in the kingdom right now. That he's raising up an army, that he's breathing across what otherwise would be considered as dry bones. And he's bringing people back to the surface and God is going to call you to be a part of a lot of that, where you're going to be like, man, this felt like a dry bone interaction, or this felt like a dry bone connect. I don't know, but God's going to begin to breathe those things back up. He's going to have you breathe life into them by connecting them. And you may have no idea whatever comes to that connection, but I'm praying that the Spirit puts a knowing in your knower, 
that you're like, I know God told me to connect those people, and I don't need to know what the outcome is because I'm that confident because I had a dream about this person, and I had a dream about this person, and God just told me I'm supposed to connect these people. And so if there were an anointing for divine connections, God is loosing that anointing in you tonight. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would bring to her mind, that you would bring to her heart the people that she's connected, even the seemingly insignificant connections that you made, conversations that you had. God's going to begin to bring those back up into your mind. And this moment is going to come to your mind. You're going to say, that's coming to my mind because God is bringing it to my mind. And I'm going to pay attention. God, who do you want me to connect that person with? Am I supposed to call that? Like, pay attention to that. So, Father, I thank you for my sister. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would make her mindful of your work, that you would make her mindful of your network, that you would make her mindful that you have actually centered her in the center of lots of people, and that she would recognize the divine position that you have placed her in. I pray, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are fun. We thank you that you love to bless us. I thank you that it delights the Father to bless his child. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just fill her afresh tonight from the top of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes, and that she would have a fresh infilling of your love and of your presence, God, of your sweetness, of your tenderness, and of your peace. God, I pray that you would remind her that you're still just beginning with her as well, that every day is a new day, every season is a new day. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the newness coming upon her right now in Jesus' name. God, just reignite that, that faith of a child in her reignite the fun of the spirit in her come on some things have gotten a little too serious in your life and i feel like the lord wants to free you up he wants you to take your shoes off and your socks off and walk around in the spirit barefoot for a while and so father i thank you holy spirit that tonight you're reigniting the fun come on he's loosening you of all the stresses all the pressures all the things that have caused you to feel a little bit too tense and god is bringing you back into the freedom of the spirit the looseness of the spirit the dancing of the spirit we thank you, Holy Spirit. And so, God, I thank you right now. You do it, God. Give her more. Just give her more. Yeah, it is. Give her more, Lord. Give her more, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give her more. Give her more, Lord. More freedom. Freedom up. Freedom up. Freedom up. Freedom up. Thank you, Jesus. Give her more. Give her more, Lord. Give her more, Lord. Give her more, Lord. Come on. And no more seriousness. I just love it that the Lord just wants to free you up. Like, it's going to be all right. Take your shoes and your socks off. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the fun of the Spirit. We thank you for the fun of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You want to dance, Carrie? And she's too busy giggling up here. She's got the giggles. She's got the Rodney Howard Brown anointing going on her right now. <laughs> Keep loosing that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Father, for just reconnecting the way you work, God, how you bring things back around in your timing. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that every word that has been spoken over her, God, she sees evidence of those things. But here's what I know about you. Just from reading your spirit, even if you didn't see evidence, you would still be holding on to that word. You would still believe God for the big in your own life. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that when you get up in the morning, you are ready to go. Like some people get up in the morning and they're intentional to put on their armor, but you sleep in your armor. <laughs> because you know God's going to wake me up in the night. He's going to use me to intercede even while I'm sleeping. You have an understanding of the, the first, the second, and the third watches of the night. You recognize the importance of even that time frame that while all the world is sleeping, your spirit is engaged. And so, Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're using her even while, you, while she sleeps that she knows that her spirit is ever interceding, that your eye is upon her, that you're still using her, and that you're doing a big thing in her life. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would continue, I'm going to say continue, continue to anoint her hands for healing. I'm going to say specifically healing, healing. And I pray that you would be mindful of people who need a physical healing, that you wouldn't wait for them to ask, but you would have a knowledge that even right now that God is loosing the anointing of healing in your hands, the ability to heal from cancer, the ability to heal from insomnia, 
the ability to heal from any physical affliction or any physical disease. Loose it right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give it more. Give her more. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> won't bother me. Oh, uh, yeah. Let, I'm, I'm going to have her place her hand kind of just on your lower back, if you don't mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for... Um, and when I say fixing things, I don't say, I, I, I mean like making it a fixed, making it fixed, that it's immovable, right? And though there are places and spaces in our body that are supposed to be flexible, there are places and spaces in our soul that are supposed to be flexible. Now, there are other places and spaces in our body that are supposed to be fixed, that are supposed to be resilient, that are supposed to be immovable, just like there are places and spaces in your mind, in your heart, that are to be fixed and immovable, so I just, I'm going to speak to your mind. Does any wavering that has happened in your mind that is causing just that pelvic to shift back and forth? And I call forth the fixation, like that your mind in this space would become fixed, that it would become immovable. And then I declare that the pelvic will begin to mimic the mind, that the more resilient you become in your mind, the more fixed you become in your mind, the more that pelvic will just begin to stay in that space. And so, God, we just speak that healing across her entire body, that even as her mind is becoming more fixed, even as her memory is being restored, God, even as you are bringing to her, her mind things that she once forgot, you're bringing back to her mind, that you're bringing back into recollection. I thank you, Lord, for childhood memories coming back and being shown to her very clearly. And I thank you, Father, that in all of that, you're reminding her of the days of her youth. Come on. The days when things weren't as complicated. And God is bringing you back into that simplicity where there's not so much movement and not so much frailty and not so much fickleness, but there's just an easy, fixed mindset. And so, God, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. I declare from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes that the Spirit of the Lord is consuming you, <laughs> restoring you, rewriting and moving things around even in your brain in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that things that were once scrambled are coming back into order in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Again, just memories. I just call forth memories. I call forth memories in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're not concerned about a mammogram because this body is consumed with the blood of Jesus. So we thank you. There's nothing to find here except the DNA of the kingdom, except the DNA of the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get it. Get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some crazy ladies. Father, I thank you for Robin, right? I thank you, Holy Spirit, for all the work that you're doing in her life. I thank you, God, for just teaching her what it means to really live a life of sacrifice. And, uh, and I feel like there's been a lot of things that you have sacrificed, and you haven't done it like a lot of times when people are sacrificing, we like announce it to the world. Like we want everybody to know what we have sacrificed for Jesus. But you have not been like that. I really see a really humble spirit in your life. And there have been things that you have sacrificed that nobody in this room knows. And it's just between you and the Holy Spirit. And you're perfectly content with that because you understand the reward of the Lord. You've learned how to go into your closet and feel the saturation of God's pleasure coming upon you and God saying, I see you. I see the work you've done. I see the sacrifices you've made and you don't need the accolade of man. And that's just a real humble spirit with humility is that meekness, that attribute of, I know I have the authority to, I know I have the right to, but so often I just choose not to because I trust the Lord to take care of these things. And I see that attribute and meekness in you as well. And so, Father, I thank you for Robin. I thank you for humility. I thank you for the meekness you've placed into her. I thank you, Father, that she has learned how to allow the reward of the kingdom to just saturate her physical body. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that even tonight that she would just feel the reward of your presence just penetrating her from the top of her head down to the tips of her toes. The Bible says he is a rewarder of those who diligently and earnestly seek him. And you're one of those that goes into the presence and you're diligent about it. And you're like, I'm not leaving this space until I feel the reward of your love, until I feel the reward of your peace, until I feel the reward of your kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that she knows what that means. She knows what it looks like. There it is. 
Yeah. <laughs> the socks. The socks.